Alrighty, cherubs, so this is our last piece for Imperial Rome. <clears throat> and here we get the Ludovici Battle Sarcophagus. Okay, now this box is <sighs> spectacular. It's this high relief that depicts a battle between the Romans and the Gauls, Romans and the Barbarians. And you can tell the Romans because they look very Romany. We've got their armored with their helmets and their capes and their tunics. And then they've got the barbarians. Notice the barbarians are wearing pants. The pant is a barbarian, barbarian, a Northern uh, European invention. Okay. It's just FYI. We've got the, we've got the Northern Europeans, not the Romans to thank for wearing pants. Um, but they're got this, all long, curly, disheveled, scraggly hair and beards, whereas the Romans are very clean cut. All right, so again, you can see the propaganda here in this piece. Um, but look at the, the depth of those carvings, the depth of that relief. And this is remarkable. So, so beautiful. The Ludovici battle sarcophagus is significant because it, it begins to show how things are changing. Now, this is late empire. This is the beginning of the late empire, 250 CE. Um, in the late empire, things are going to start to change. We're going to start to lose touch with the classical past. Things are going to start to be less idealized, more abstracted. And we can start just to see the very beginning beginnings of the hints of that abstraction here. And as we move from here until the end of the Roman Empire, it's going to get really abstracty um, and really simplified really quickly. So you can tell here by looking at it, and what I mean by the abstraction is the sense of depth, that they don't bother creating a sense of scale or depth here, that the only depth really is they're using vertical placement. We're going to talk again about the ways that you can create a uh, sense of depth, but really the only way that you know that this guy is further away than this guy is because he's up top, right? Which is an abstracted sense of depth. Go ahead and watch the clip. Oh my gosh. It's just so good. So remarkable. How does the Ludovici battle sarcophagus compare to the other sarcophagi that we've seen? Okay, it, it does retain its boxy, its rectangular-ness, whereas Tutankhamun is going to be more uh, anthropomorphic, as is the, um, the Etruscans, the sarcophagus of the spouses. Rich material, more common material, um, in-between material, expensive marble, but not gold, but not terracotta. Okay. Um, and again, this is going to be filled with, with imagery. The, the term that I want to you to understand for this, it's called horror vacui, horror, like a horror movie, vacui. Horror vacui means the fear of empty spaces. Not that they're literally afraid of empty spaces, but it's just, it's a, term used to describe the fact that it's completely filled in with no negative space at all. There's no place for your eye to rest. It's just jam packed with things happening. And that's what's happening in the little Ludovici battle sarcophagus. Now, again, this sarcophagus, we're going to start to see that um, they're going to be influenced by Christianity at this point where we're going to start to bury people whole as opposed to burn their ash, you know, burn them to ashes and bury their ashes. And the reason for that Christianity wants like the Egyptians, you need a body to be resurrected. Okay. Let me scoot this over here so you can see. Now the ways that you create the illusion of depth on a 2d surface. And we've talked about these before, but here's a good reminder. We use atmospheric perspective, which again is the lightning of colors. Things get lighter in color and in value as you move away from uh, the, the foreground. Linear perspective diminishes size. Overlapping things are closer to you, obscure 
things that are behind. Okay. Vertical placement. We understand that things that, that are further up on a page or on a, a 2D surface are further away um, than the things that are down at the bottom. Size difference we talked about and foreshortening, remember, where things get bigger again as they get closer to you. I want you to go through and name a piece that uses each of these elements, okay? We've talked about a piece that uses each of these things. I want you to go ahead and name those. Go ahead, go back through your notes, pause the video, and go back through your notes and, and look at these. Let's see if you can find them. I like to call the vertical placement Scooby-Doo stacking, where it looks like you've got some, you know, like this happening, this moment here from Scooby-Doo, you know, where they all peek through the doorway and they're literally have to be standing on each other's backs, but, and for the purposes of the cartoon, I suppose they are, but really what's happening is that they're just meant to be further away. And Scooby-Doo does it for comedic, comedic effect. Yeah, on essays, we're going to call it vertical placement rather than Scooby-Doo stacking. I may refer to it as Scooby-Doo stacking here in class. Okay. So abstraction, again, is just simplification. Both are pictures of Scarlett Johansson, but one is uh, more in detailed and one is more simplified. Okay. So again, we have the Ludovici battle sarcophagus the figures are going to start lacking individuality. That's another mark that things are starting to change. Things are starting to abstract. Okay. Again, horror vacui, deep relief, um, no illusion of depth. And the Roman army defeats the Gauls, the barbarians. All right. And those are our pieces for Imperial Rome. And this ends our tour of the classical world. So we are going to be having a test on the Greeks, the Etruscans, and the Romans uh, coming up very shortly. We are going to be um, having a quiz on the Roman pieces next time in class. So make those flashcards, study up, and we'll see you next time.